Okay, so next up we have Dr. Evan Oswald, who's a postdoctoral fellow from the University of Corporation for Atmospheric Research, housed in the State Climate Office in the University of Vermont. And his talk is Optimizing Climate Data Sets for Use in Forest Health Research. All right, thank you. Oh, so, um, so I'm an applied climate background, and so um, my background is mostly from the uh, climate side of things, but a lot of my interests lay in stuff like uh, forest health and things that climate in impacts. And so um, the State Climate Office does a lot of work with our climate, climate works, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my work with um, climate and forests. So um, we approach kind of that collaboration from two sides, long-term and short-term side. The short-term side being more of uh, forest health indicators like uh, uh, crown conditions and stuff. And uh, long-term, looking more at the tree rings. And so when we start tackling a problem like this, we start thinking, okay, what kind of uh, climate data can we use? Uh, we start thinking about things like domains, uh, resolution, um, the strengths and limitations of the different climate data sets. And usually that comes about from just knowing a lot about how they're constructed and whatnot. But in all reality, um, the, uh, the meteorological variables uh, end up being kind of transformed into climate indices, which are a little more uh, in tune with the phenomena of that affect uh, their subjects. So here, forest health. And um, you know, that will um, translate <coughs> into the uncertainty from the meteorological variables into the climate indices. And it's important to think about that stuff, but in general, we have these climate indices that we put into an empirical relationship to try to see what, you know, um, what are those relationships and the strengths. And of course, these are supporting theories that we already think you know, are affecting the trees and stuff. And, and again, still that uncertainty will kind of get into there. And so I'm kind of a climate background guy. I kind of want to sneak out a slide in here of the uh, past changes in the climate. This is the state average temperature for Vermont for the past 250 years from the Berkeley Earth surface temperature data set. And you can see our red line and the black line. The red line is the 10 year average, and the black line is about the yearly average. And what you can see there is the black really goes, uh, really varies a lot about the red. And that, that high school variability, that kind of allows us to build these relationships, gives us a good amount of variability to kind of grasp onto. And then, of course, when we're looking into the future, we're more kind of talking about the red line. Um, so to talk a little bit more about our short-term focus, um, that's kind of more rooted in the forest health indicators, so crown conditions, basal area. Um, the people that uh, we mostly have been you know, working with is Sandy and Jen. <coughs> And um, this work is kind of a focus on the past 30 years. And um, when we go to our, our climate forcing, we're again using these climate indices. These climate indices work at an annual scale, so you know, a time series of every year in the past 30 years. But what we're trying to key on here with our climate indices are more uh, daily scale or sub monthly scale events, like, for example, um, thaw events in the middle of the winter or the number of heat wave days in the summer. Um, and since we have a lot of different locations for um, the forest health indicators, um, what we would end up producing from the climate side is a spatially continuous uh, data set, either the raster or something. And um, the kind of data set that we chose to support you know, making these climate forcings is uh, the PRISM data set from the uh, Chris Daly's group out of Oregon. And that gives you a daily temperature, maximums, minimums, precipitation totals. Um, it provides this on a spatially continuous basis. These are a four kilometer average uh, grid. And uh, this is serially complete, so there's no missing days. But even though that's an extremely high resolution um, climate data set, as far as health, um, I mean, forest health data would go, it's actually a low resolution. We probably need to increase our spatial resolution for four kilometers. Um, and so in response to that, we developed a very resource light and um, method to um, refine the spatial resolution, get that resolution a little bit finer. And so how we did that was we took a secondary data set that um, is at a high resolution, but it doesn't provide time series, but rather uh, temporal averages. And then we um, put those together to kind of get what we needed. 
I'll explain it here with this, this map. This map is up in Mount Mansfield. So you can see the county border there between Chittenden and Washington and Memorial. And um, the black circle dots is that four kilometer resolution data set that has the time series. And then you have these X's. And those X's is the higher resolution secondary data set that provides temporal averages. So we kind of put these two together and it ends up that we can get um, time series at the X's, so higher resolution. And as you can see, there's only one black dot there on Mount Mansfield. And of course, there's many different um, parts of Mount Mansfield that have different um, experiences with climate. And uh, when it comes to problems with resolution in these kind of data sets, the places where they're going to have the most problems is like a mountainous terrain. And so it's just perfect that we have um, VMC monitoring sites right on Mount Mansfield. And so the three green stars there are the Mansfield West, Mansfield Summit, and Mansfield East stations that all monitor about two meters up. And um, those allowed us to um, demonstrate improvements with our method for um, refining that data. So maybe to switch over gears to the uh, long-term uh, focus, uh, let's be on tree rings. And so Shelly Raybeck is our um, person we mostly work with here, and um, she has uh, collected for us different potential um, collaborators, so they would have the, the tree ring data. And so um, we haven't firmly established um, what sites we're going to have, but we have 81 potential sites. And so we focused on providing um, climate information um, for the 100 years at those locations. And again, these are going to be through annual climate indices, stuff that um, we really think it's important to a tree ring. So for example, uh, the number of cycles, freeze-thaw cycles in the spring or in the fall. Um, for here, we're actually looking at specific locations. We're not providing spatially continuous data. Um, the, the data set that we um, kind of use to quantify these forces is the uh, 2013 data set uh, described by Ben and Livna. That's an update from the Mauer data set. And that is also spatially continuous. And uh, it's, it's at six kilometer resolution. And it's serially completes so within two days. And what this data set provides us that the prison data set doesn't is long term uh, daily time series. Uh, and the problem, the interesting thing though is, is even though it provides long term, you really shouldn't use that data set for a long term analysis. And that's because we have what we call temporal discontinuities in that data set. At any particular point in space, if you look at the time series, you would have erroneous jumps. And that's uh, just by the way that the data set is constructed. So the solution, um, and again, I want it to be a low resource kind of solution, is we try to you know, offset these discontinuities, kind of try to make it appropriate for a long-term solution. We use a secondary climate data set, and that um, climate data set is the United States Historical Climate Network, and that data set is appropriate for long-term analysis. So um, just to kind of explain this a little bit more is that this map right here in Vermont has uh, 61 locations we might have tree ring data for, or someone does, but you know, maybe they won't let us see it. But anyway, so we take, uh, we extract a time series of each one of these locations from the gridded data set, and then you see that there's these stars on the map. That's the secondary data set. That's the um, USHCN stations. And so we pair up each one of these locations where the tree ring symbol is with one of the USHCN stations by um, correlation analysis. And once we have them paired up with a, a reference station, well, that allows us to go ahead and work on making the uh, time series from the extracted data more in line with um, a trusted data set. And so anyway, a summary of this is I'm a, a postdoc working in the state climate office for the UCAR, working with forest health scientists. Um, we've recently demonstrated a few uh, resource flight methods to um, improve climate data to fit for um, a couple of uh, investigations with climate change and uh, forest health that we're doing here. And in the spring, we'll have these um, methods published in Earth and Space Sciences Journal. And then um, sometime after that, we'll have these results um, published between, you know, with the, with the relationships with the forest health. And so I'll just leave it here with um, a couple of the publications for the data sets that I reference. Thank you.
the utility of this is just tremendous, and I'm so excited to be able to work with you on this. But my, my question, we haven't talked about this. Are there any plans um, to be able to share these these products that you come up with? And I think that they can be useful to a lot of people. I'm not sure if we've gotten that yet. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, certainly, probably won't be sharing them like today or, or next month, but I think at some point in time it would be, it might be fine to share them. I don't know how they'd be distributed or how they'd be shared. Um, but with that said, if you can program or get a student to program in some C++, I've kind of designed these methods to be extremely flexible so that other groups could also use them. There'll be better data sets than these that come out in the future, and I'm hoping that these data sets, uh, these methods allow improvement you know, for anybody. Thank you.